Welcome back and thank you for staying with the broadcast. Social commentator Richard Peterkin is urging the Ministry of Health to ramp up its education drive for the full rollout of its COVID-19 vaccination campaign. Peterkin says that the ministry must do so quickly if it wants everyone to get on board and reach its ultimate goal of having a sizable percentage of the population inoculated. As the Ministry of Health continues to roll out its COVID-19 vaccination drive, one member of society is urging the department to move swiftly with its communication strategy. Richard Peterkin has been following the pandemic from inception and has been a firm supporter of getting vaccinated. He believes that if St. Lucia wants to be effective at controlling the spread of the virus and lessening the severity of it among its people, then it must put substantial effort into proper education. I didn't actually watch the, the, the rollout yesterday. Very encouraged and, and glad that it's happened. Um, so that now the people can see that yes, vaccines are here and um, we're inoculating a number of frontliners. Um, you know, we, we only have the, the, the 3,000 vaccines to begin with, so only so many people can get it. But we, we clearly need to get out there and, and start the education rolling to make sure that when the rest of the vaccines come, which, which won't be too far from now, that we won't find people resisting or hesitating to take it. So that means it's all of us that really care about ourselves, our family, our people, need to try and encourage people um, to take the vaccine. You could talk to your doctor if you're concerned about your health, but, but take, otherwise take the vaccine, because the more people that do is the faster we get to community hood. Among the first to take the vaccine on Wednesday was the chief medical officer, the health minister, the prime minister and his wife, Dr. Stephen King and Dr. Wayne Felicien. Many question the absence of the leader of the opposition among the group. Peterkin says that Pierre's absence should be a non-issue as he has firmly supported vaccination from the onset. To be quite honest, I've, I've seen him making many statements, very supportive of the vaccine campaign and, and promoting it and saying, yes, St. Lucian should make sure that they get themselves vaccinated when it's here. So I don't for one second believe that he's uh, in, you know, um, against it. Um, or there's any other particular reason, medically or otherwise, as to so why he can't. I think what he did say was he'd prefer that he went to frontliners first, which is fine. Um, but, you know, he, he, and I'm sure if he is aware that, that when he does get it, that it will be showing a lot of his friends, a lot of his supporters, that it's safe as well. The Ministry of Health assures citizens that the COVID-19 vaccine is safe and effective. The vaccine will be made available free to citizens and will be given on a voluntary basis. For the Hot 7 News, Nisha Charles reporting. St. Lucians in the past have steadily shown resistance to the idea of taking the COVID-19 vaccine once it became available to the public, with many suggesting that the island's Prime Minister Alan Chastney and his cabinet should take it first. Some have said that it is only then that they would consider taking the jab themselves. Well, on Wednesday, he did just that and became one of the island's first recipients of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. So, the Hot 7 team took to the streets to ask members of the public whether they will now reconsider the notion. Here's what they had to say. Well, when I really look at it, I was skeptical about taking that vaccine. But when I saw um, the, the leader lead by example, I said to myself, it looks like I will take it. Right now, the PM take the vaccine to try and encourage us to take it. But do you know what the vaccine they're giving him? It is the same thing that they will give the balance of the people. So I wouldn't advise the people to take the vaccine, not at all. I don't trust the scientists. They never, they never cure AIDS, they never cure Ebola, they never cure none of the disease. And why should they create such a disease like corona and then want to create a cure for cure black people. They will never cure black people. I always decided in life as long as the vaccine is good and it is okay, I have no problem of taking it. Well, he's the leader as long as he takes it. Let's see a few days to see how he react first and then we can go after, but we must see how he react on him first before we follow him. Yes, I will. As long as my turn come up, I will. Because I believe he's a, he's a good example for a leader and our leader is supposed to set example. He did. I don't think I'm going to take the vaccine because I've never had COVID-19 and I've never had any reason to be tested 
So I don't think I'm going to take the vaccine. If I'm sick, yeah, I will consider taking the vaccine. But until then, no, I won't take the vaccine. Does the bargaining group on behalf of officers of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force serve as a breeding ground for young politicians? During his appearance on Hot 7 TV's The Hot Seat, former police commissioner Severin Marshary said he has seen no such proof. I don't necessarily share that sentiment because there is no proof of that. I think we've had a number of people who have been members of the Police Welfare Association and I do not know of any one of them branching off into politics. The only one that comes to mind now is our current national Minister of National Security. Um, however, one needs to understand that the Police Welfare Association is more or less equivalent to, any, to a trade union not to represent its members. And we know the history of the trade union as it relates to, 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 to politics. But I do not know of it in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force through the Police Welfare Association. Monchery, however, indicated that it is not acceptable for on-duty officers to be actively involved or pursuing political careers while still under oath to serve and protect. You cannot be a member of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and be out there showing where, where you are. And I do not even know that we have, that it is true that we have a number of lower rank officers who are vying to to go into politics. I know of one example where a young constable resigned and then became the, the candidate for Mikud Nof. But I do not know, it is not something that um, should be tolerated. I mean, everyone under the Constitution has afforded the, the right to, to support whatever political party they want. However, as a member of the force, it is not something that should be made public. That was former police commissioner and newly appointed special advisor to the Prime Minister on security matters, Severin Marshary. Still on the police, the Royal St. Lucia Police Force is under new management and the new chief is looking to implement more people-centered measures within the organization. Milton Daisy says he's hoping to build more bridges between the public and the police. The general public, especially victims of crime, can look forward to seeing a new side of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force under the management of the new Acting Commissioner of Police, Milton Daisy. Having served as the Acting Commissioner in the past, Daisy has received rave reviews for his stints where there were noticeable reductions in violent crime. On Thursday, Daisy told Hot 7 News that his main focus is returning the force to a place where the relationship with the people was amicable and trusting. One of the things that I would um, like to see and um, that I would see to it that is implemented is um, in terms of the contact with the public. And, uh, but I say contact with the public, not just um, on a general note. However, um, persons who have made reports and so on, um, persons who have been victims of crime, and um, I would like that direct um, contact with them um, and to reassure them that their case is um, at a particular at a particular um, status that um, the what is the outcome, how we moving forward with the case. So I would like that personal touch um, more or less. So um, and that would be from my investigators, um, the person who are investigating the cases and so on. So that is one of the things that I will be driving, driving um, through out there. Daisy has served as an officer in the RSLPF for over 35 years. Opposition leader Philip J. Pierre does not subscribe to the term silly season. These were his words to Hot 7 on Thursday. And according to Pierre, the period that we are currently in is one of introspection and one where St. Lucians must ponder on the choices that they will be faced with in the near future. The opposition leader was speaking against the backdrop of the upcoming election period. A time when the people of St. Lucia must understand that when they go to, go to, go to vote, they're going to select a government that will, that will govern the affairs of the country in trying times for the next five years. So I don't agree with the fact that it's a silly season. I think it's a season that we must take, we must take very importantly. We must think that that's a very important season for us as, as a people. And I want to urge all solutions to exercise their franchise. So look at what has happened in the last four, four and a half years, look at the promises that have been made, look at those that have been fulfilled, look at the, at the level of governance that, that we've had, and make a decision 
based on the conscience. Pierre says that the St. Lucia Labour Party is prepared for the road ahead. As far as our candidates are concerned, we have 15 candidates. We have not chosen candidates for the, for, for the, for the two cash three seats. It's a strategic responsibility. It's, it's a strategic move that the party has taken. And I want to, to assure the, the, the people of these two constituencies that they'll, they'll get adequate representation when the time comes. So it's a strategic move, it's a, it's a strategic action that we've taken, but in no way do we think that these two seats are not important. They are very important for us, and there are people on the ground doing what the work they have to do. But because of strategic reasons, we have not called it to Kaili. Prime Minister Alan Shastney is yet to announce the date for the next general elections. You're watching the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. Stay with us, we have more news after this break.